stop saying I can't afford it. It's a mindset issue, folks. It's just a simple math problem. If you went through at least fourth grade in school, you will know how to calculate your financial report cards and to see whether you are in trouble or not. Not only that, you'll be able to run everything through your financial report cards, every transaction that you make to see what it's doing to your net worth. What you should be saying is instead of I can't afford it, you need to be saying, how can I afford it? How can I afford it? So today's topic is financial report cards. And I want to give you a simple explanation so that from this point forward, every single time you spend money or do anything in your personal financial arena, you'll be able to see what it's going to do to your bottom line. Just like a business has a bottom line, theirs is revenue minus expenses equals profit or net income. The other way, if you're in the red, if you're spending more than you are bringing in, that's a net loss. So just like that, in a business, your personal finances, you've got a financial report card, and there's a couple of different ones. And the one I want to talk to you about today is your balance sheet. And that is how you calculate your net worth. And that is assets, which is what you own, minus liabilities, which is what you owe to your creditors. And when you subtract those two numbers, that's going to get your net worth. Let me give you a simple explanation. An asset is something that has value. For example, if you've got cash in the bank, that would be considered an asset. And some of you, it's going to hurt your feelings a little bit. But when you go down for a bank loan, chances are they're not going to let you put like your clothes and your jewelry and that kind of stuff on there simply because you would get basically rummage sale prices for it if you had to sell those items. So I never count those items. You can if you want to. But today I want to encourage you to do a quick down and dirty analysis and calculate your net worth. Don't be upset if you're in the negative or if you're upside down. So I want you to take a, and, and list out all the things that you own. This would be your vehicles, any of your toys, anything that you could sell and uh, get some value out of that. And then add all of that up. That's your assets. And then your liabilities. Who do you owe what to? This is credit card debt. This is your uh, house payment. This is car payments. Anybody in anything that you owe money to, you've got to put that in your liability section. And then when you get those added up, you take your assets, what you own, minus your liabilities, what you owe, and that bottom line number is going to be your net worth. And the only way that you can increase your wealth is to increase that bottom number. That's the only way. So you have to have more assets or you have to get rid of that debt or both so that you bring your wealth up. And we've already talked about how important it is that you buy appreciating assets because appreciating assets tend to go up in value. And my preference is buying an asset that is both appreciating and provides cash flow. That way, my income is going up as well as the value is going up. Now, let me give you a quick little example of some issues that you, you may not realize. When you went and got that student loan, you now have a debt, right? Where does that go under? That goes under liabilities. So what did that do to your net worth? that decreased your net worth because you don't have an asset to back it up with, to offset it. Makes sense? Yeah, they'll tell you, you know, you're going to get a job and you're going to make $50,000 a year and all of that stuff. But right now, 
Math-wise, when you're looking at that on a piece of paper, do you have an asset? No. So asset is zero. Student loan debt is 50000 What did that do to your net worth? Minus 50000 You go out to eat and you put something on your credit card. Is that food an asset? No. Did it put anything in there? No, just going to come out the other end an hour or two, right? <laughs> so you put something on your credit card. Where's that go? Under the liabilities. That's a minus. So asset zero minus $100 for the food. What did that do to your net worth? Minus $100. Are you getting the picture? That vacation that you had to have last year that you put on your credit card? Are all those Christmas presents, all of that stuff, was there an asset? Mm-mm. Zero. What'd that do? Liabilities went up. So that's a minus. What'd it do to your net worth? Went down. So some of you are set starting off and you're going to be in the hole. Some of you have vehicles right now that if you went to sell them or toys, RVs, whatever, that the value is worth less than what you owe on them. So that certainly is a negative on your net worth. So you guys have got to do your homework and you've got to look through this lens of every transaction that you do with your money. How is it going to affect my bottom line? What's it doing to my net worth? Is it growing my net worth or is it taking away from my family's net worth. So here's a couple of things. Like I said, I want you to start thinking differently because this is just simply a mindset issue. And this is a math problem. Everything is figure outable. So it don't matter how bad off you are, or you may be in great shape. You just want to add to your net worth. Okay. So remember, Start just like a pair of glasses. I want you to think of every time you do something, what is this doing to my bottom line? It's really, it's a simple math problem. It's only subtraction and addition. Your assets, did what I just spend my money on give me an asset or did it give me a liability? What did it do to my net worth? Am I now worth more or am I worth less after this transaction? And before you go and make a big purchase, just to give you um, a little bit of tip here, sleep on it, y'all. Sleep on it. Don't do anything, you know, quick without thinking, especially if it's a high value item. So here's the combination that I want you to think about when you are building your net worth and trying to uh, build wealth for your family. It's a combination of things. You cannot save your way to being wealthy did you hear me you cannot save your way to wealthy because you just don't make enough money you just don't that's the honest cold hard brutal truth and if you could chances are you probably would have already done that so one of the first things that i tell you to do just to kind of give you a reality check is go to the social security administration ssa.gov and i want you to pull your report this is your report of your lifetime earnings. Over your lifetime, every dollar that you've ever made from an employer is tracked and it's in there. And that this is how Social Security, Medicare, and all of that stuff is calculated. But you'll be able to see over your lifetime how much money is sitting in your account. Not how much money is sitting in your account, how much has been paid in. Let's just say it like that. That's your earnings, okay? That's your lifetime earnings. So take a look at that. Now, the next step is you've got to find a way to increase your income. You just do. You've got to increase your income. And there's several ways that you can do it. We've talked about some of these. One, ask your boss for a raise. Make yourself more valuable at work. Quit stealing time from your employer. Y'all know who you are. You're playing on your phones. You're playing on the internet. You're playing on Facebook. You're spending all your time around the water cooler. You're stealing time from your employer. Focus, focus, focus. What can I do to make myself more valuable? What kind of job skills do I need to have 
that I can bring more money or save my employer more money to make me more valuable so that when I go in there and ask him for a raise, he's not going to be able to say nothing but yes, because you're going to be able to justify that. Okay. So that's for if you're an employee. Next, check your taxes. Talk to a tax advisor and you need to figure out your exemptions right now. Don't be letting Uncle Sam keep your money all year long and then you have to wait for a tax return. Fix those exemptions so it frees up some of your cash flow. Next, you need to get yourself a side hustle. You're not too good, y'all, for a side hustle. You're not, okay? If you truly want to be in a better position financially, you got to do what other people want so that one day you can live like other people can't. And that is a Dave Ramsey quote, and I absolutely love it. It's so easy to go with the status quo. It's so easy, peer pressure. We're doing what everybody else is doing with our money, so we're getting the same results as everybody else. I don't want to live like these people because the majority of people in America and around the world are broke. They are one paycheck away from being bankrupt. They can't even cover a $1,000 emergency. And I am talking to you, each and every one of you. You know it's true. If you lost your job, if you're a two-income or a one-income family, if you lost your job today, how long could you last before the bill collectors would come knocking? You know, you may have a wallet full of credit cards, but guess what? Those suckers got to be paid off. So you are paycheck to paycheck, just on a higher level. Again, tough love. I want you to realize the situation that you're in. Just like kids at school, it's hard. Peer pressure is hard when all your friends are driving new cars. And ladies, when all your friends are going to the spa and going getting their nails done, doing the hair, you know, all, spending thousands of dollars on their personal upkeep to look like they're rich when they're not. They got more money in their, in their bags and their purses than what they do in their retirement account. Houston, there's a problem with that. But it's so easy to look on the outside exterior for people who look like they're wealthy when they're not. You need to read that old book, Millionaire Next Door, and Ramsey Babe Steppers did one just a couple of years ago that really talks about and gets inside the people who are millionaires and multimillionaires. You might think a million dollars is a lot of money, but folks, it won't last very long, especially with the current rate of inflation. That wouldn't even hold out very long. So anyways, uh, get yourself a side hustle and bring in some extra income for your family. I'm not saying it has to be forever. I'm just saying you need to be gazelle intense about getting rid of your debt, which we'll talk about here in a minute, and bringing in more income for your family. Next, you can sell stuff. Sell stuff. I've been selling stuff, getting rid of stuff. I don't need it. You know, we've been married for four year, 40 years, and it's just crazy how much money that you can accumulate over the lifetime. So if you can get rid of it, get rid of it, sell it, or uh, take it to the junkyard get rid of it clear yourself out for new better nicer things in the future and next invest you've got to free up some of that cash so that you can invest and have your money to make money and you need to take charge of those dollars which means you need to have a spending plan i don't like the word budget because budget is constraint what i want to do is i want to be in control of all these dollars that you see floating around my head i want to know where each one of them is going they each have a home, and I want them to do a job for me. <clears throat> That's what I mean by putting your monies to work, okay? Each one of those dollars has a job to do for me, and their job is to make little babies and to make more money. So I want to make sure that my spending plan does not have holes in it. It's not like a bucket that has holes in it so that the water is draining out. And that's what you do when you absentmindedly go and spend money and you go swap the debit card, swap the debit card, swap the debit card, go to the ATM without even thinking about it because you have cash there. And all of a sudden you wake up and you go and the balance is zero and you're wondering where your dollars went. So I don't want that to happen to you. So you need to have a spending plan. Next, spend less so you can invest more. So one of the things that you need to make sure that you're doing is, and this is where, you know, people are paycheck to paycheck. You need to get yourself in a situation. And again, this doesn't have to be forever. You don't have to live like a pauper. You don't have to do any of those things. You, it's a math problem. So you just adjust where you need to, to make it happen. Spend less so that you can invest more. Next, you need to invest in appreciating assets. We talked about this. And my favorite, 
that I want to uh, try and encourage all of you to do is try and find assets that are go going up in value as well as providing cash flow because that provides you two things in that asset column. One, cash flow. And then two, over time, the value is going up. So your assets is going up, 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 up. All right, next, get rid of the dumb debt. You know, you're just paycheck to paycheck on a higher level, and that can be just a temporary thing. Get rid of it. Get rid of it so you got the cash flow. If you've got a $700 a month car payment, plus insurance and all that stuff, you're talking $1,000 right there. $1,000 a month. What could you do with $1,000 a month? You could put yourself on a better financial road to prosperity is what you could do. So work on getting rid of your dumb debt. Is it going to be popular? Is your spouse going to get mad? Is your family members and friends going to make fun of you? Absolutely. They're going to think you're crazy. Like I said yesterday and the day before and probably the day before that, I don't know how many people think that they absolutely cannot live without a car payment. I've got family members. I've got friends. I've got the same ones that you do that they think it's absolutely ridiculous. They refuse to pay $3,000 to get their paid off vehicle fixed and they'd rather go down and get in the hole you know why they don't have an emergency fund number one but anyways that's another story i'm just saying you're not going to be popular people are going to make fun of you so just get ready and have some thick skin when people start making fun of you but at the end of the day you need to do what other people want so that one day you can live like other people can't and that's where i'm going Okay. I don't care that people want to make fun of me because I'm driving a vehicle that's got, you know, 100,000 miles on it, 200,000 miles on it. Don't bother me in the least bit because when I go and I turn the key and it starts and I don't have a car payment that month and that thousand dollars means that I can go to the uh, Smoky Mountains and take my mom. Ah, who cares? Right. Who cares? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Next. Let's see here. I think that's about it. Again, like I said, these are very simple steps. It's just math problems. You need to have an emergency fund, obviously. I think I forgot to mention that. We all need emergency funds. And the first one that you need to have is $1,000, and that's off the Dave Ramsey plan, and I totally agree. You need more than that, but at least if you have $1,000 sitting you know, at home in a, in a little cash box or something like that, when, when your tire blows, when your you know, transmission goes out, when your uh, stove goes out, all those little things that usually would put you behind for months and months and months. Ask me how I know, because I lived like that for years and years and years. And so uh, that always sets you back. So if you have a little bit of cushion, what they recommend now is three to six months of uh, living expenses set aside for an emergency fund. So you can work on that little by little. So the main thing is, is you want to get, get this financial report card in your mindset. What I'm doing today, is it an asset? Is it debt? What's it doing to my net worth? Am I worth more today or less? Later on this afternoon, I'm going to share with you um, a house that is absolutely perfect for the co-living, just to give you kind of an idea of what kind of houses that I'm looking at for our Bedrooms by the Beach project here in Northwest Florida. Again, if you know anybody who has at least $100 a month that they have available to improve the financial situation of their families by all means send them to me because we are starting up a new cohort and like I said it's a it's a temporary thing I only do this during the first piece of the year then we cut that off and we spend the rest of the year investing our money and this year we are totally building our foundation out of nothing but real estate and then we're taking the rental income and investing it in um, high reward platforms at the end of the year in November We'll be distributing 80% of any uh, revenue that's generated by those platforms among all the supporters and the trainees in the program. So it's real exciting, something new that I'm doing, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. So again, this is Nancy Gaskins, sowing seeds of financial hope and entrepreneurial opportunity in communities around the globe. I keep forgetting to tell y'all, I have a YouTube channel that I'm just putting all these Facebook lives in. So if you miss any of them, you can go there, you can Google my name, Nancy Gaskins, Passive Income Generators, and you can find that YouTube channel. Just kind of getting started with that, throwing all my old videos in there, but you're welcome to go and check it out and subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Thank you and have a great day.